So the FPL community has grown massively in the last, well, three, four, five seasons um, to the point where it is now, well, it's ever growing and it is incredibly vocal about people's um, good weeks and also bad weeks. You hear it all the time. Um, And I guess I want to know, how do you um, articulate your passion for the game to this community that's out there that's so kind of ready to hear about your views and your opinions on things? Nita? Yes, yeah, so first things first, I, along with Olivia, we present daily updates. So be it captain picks, rounding up the best players from a previous night, um, looking at the best performers so far in the season. So that's like, I'd say my first foot in the door when it, I'm showing my passion. <laughs> um, then it goes a bit wild on social media. <laughs> um, so I regularly tweet asking people, Um, who they think I should captain Um, and more recently I am so obsessed with TikTok I've started making videos reacting to how many points I I get at the end of a game week and they have been going down (laughs) so well there's been a great I guess a great synergy in the fact that my videos have gone when I've been doing well so (laughs) I'm laughing at so many people I'm 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 dreading the day when I'm gonna have to use the song like oh no oh no 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 (laughs) But um, yeah, no, I I love it. Like I said, it's one big family. And when I throw out a question like, who do I captain? Or I'm thinking about Gundogan, Fernandez or someone else. And I get so many different responses. Um, It's just great to hear people's opinions. It just, you feel all all together, I guess is what I'd say. Um, Olivia, do you wanna, as as you two work together, it kind of makes sense for me to go to you next. Yeah, I mean, Obviously, the, the daily updates, and Lisa's explained perfectly, obviously, that's where it starts. And the same with, same with, I put a lot of polls on Insta, when I can't, on, on Twitter, sorry, when, I, when I'm so indecisive, and I don't like having that big decision to make, I really don't like it. So I will just put a poll on my Twitter when it's who to captain. Um, and if people reply to me, I'll just reply who I think if they're offering me, like if they ask me who I think's better, better value or whatever, I'll definitely reply. And on Instagram as well, I've slowly, it depends if I'm doing well, like Anita said, I just <laughs> screenshot if I've done well. Like I, I started on minus one with Leno when he got sent off. And got to 87 points so I was buzzing about that um and I, I sort of am slowly putting them on Instagram as well and, and people actually reply to me on Insta because I, I get a lot more interaction on Twitter with FPL obviously because of because it going out on the, their official um page but on Instagram as well like people will just reply being like send me pictures of their team and and I think it works both ways like I look for interaction with them and and people look with like for interaction with us as well and I think that's really nice um when you can help or try and help <laughs> much as possible because sometimes I remember last season a great example was when I told everyone to put Pookie in their team um, and he scored a hat trick and I didn't have him in my team myself and then a few weeks later when I thought yeah he's gonna score again I put him in and you don't realize people actually listen to you that's the thing like you know these these like daily updates go out and you think do people do people actually but they do because I got absolutely slated the next day people telling me that they put Pookie in their team and captain him when he did absolutely nothing. But it's nice to know that people actually watch and people are actually basing, you know, decisions off what you do because we're not just guessing. Do you know mm. what I mean? We don't just pick three players and think, oh yeah, you know, they're good players, they're in good form. Like we do look at, like obviously Kelly, like I learned pretty much what I do from Kelly and like it's just everything that, you know, we do actually look at stats and, and everything behind it. We don't just pick out certain players and go, there you go, which some people think we do. Um, so yeah, it's nice It's nice when it like works both ways and you can interact with, with the people that are like watching and knowing that they're listening to yourself. Kelly, we'll go to you next. As Olivia's mentioned you, makes sense. Yeah, it's the same really. Um, I used to get a lot more interaction with the FPL daily updates, but I've continued to try and do it. Um, I don't always tweet about... I'm always conscious of putting my team out there just because I feel like you're setting yourself up for a bit of a fall because people are like, oh, why have you put that person in? Why have you not? Um, last week, um, when Gundogan returned, I took a hit from about 15 minutes before the deadline. I'm really indecisive, um, like Olivia just said then. And I brought him in and I was so happy because he got a return that helped me win like most of my head-to-heads that week. So I tweeted about it and the official account like quote tweeted it. And I was like, that day feeling really good about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then the last two weeks I've had shockers and I've left like 25 points on my bench the last two weeks so again but then I'll tweet and I'll say like in the interest of fairness I should also highlight <laughs> we do have, we have bad days as well this is what's happened this week um so yeah it's just stuff like that because I think all FPL managers we all understand the highs and we understand the lows yeah and it's quite nice that communal shared feeling because even if you see someone's had a good week you know how good that feels so you kind of like, oh that's really good for them and the same we've all been there when we've like picked the wrong captain whether it's picking Salah against Brighton rather than Bruno Fernandes against Southampton which so many of us did so it's like sharing I like to kind of try and share those highs and lows with people because I think that's one of the best things about FPL I also try and talk about it like on other shows that I do as well um it's so like when we present Premier League uh, Premier League today for the global audience um, Premier League viewers around the world like kind of if we're talking about a player sometimes I'll mention if I know my co-present hasn't had them in their team like just to bring it into other conversations as well um, because I think there's so many people around the world um, that are playing it now and some people some people still not on the bandwagon but there's definitely a lot more and yeah I, I just like talking to it about anyone really which some people probably don't really like. I think everybody really likes it like I, I think it's one of those isn't it where the Twitter community and like Liv said the Instagram community is is it's growing every single week there's more and more people there's more FPL whatever accounts that appear over there and and you can kind of you get a feel for people and 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 that relationship that there is between them playing the game and you playing the game and how actually everybody plays the game slightly differently because all of our teams however template you think your team is it is different because it's your team Kelly you and I have a similar strategy there's been bench points everywhere um I, I mean I'm over 200 now on my bench this season it's ridiculous um but it's that's been my strategy because I was so afraid of having games cancelled or what have you so and I think that kind of talking point has driven a lot of people to our channel because they every week ask me well how many points have you benched this week and it's like oh yes I benched you check again this week for another another points haul so it is what it is Jules what about you yeah similar to the other girls really obviously we all work on various shows that are FPL related so working on the official FPL show on Premier League channels around the world we talk about FPL every single week and our job really on the show is to help give the viewers and the other players tips really on what they should do with their team now it's quite amusing because I think some people assume that myself and James who host the show with me are the experts but we're really not like we are there <laughs> to learn from the actual experts like you Sam on what we should do. So it is quite funny when people then tweet you and say, oh, so who do you think I should captain? Or like, oh, so what do you think about this player? I'm like, don't ask me. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like you, mate. Like, I need to know the answers as well. Um, but obviously it does help being around experts like you, Sam, often um, and hearing all the advice that you guys give. And obviously all of us that play FPL regularly, we're, we're all sort of, there to give our views and and our own tips and what we think we think is the right thing to do in that game week as well so yeah like the FPL show is probably the main port of call for me um doing that on a weekly basis but just like the other girls said you you then take it to all the other platforms that you work on as well so I do a podcast outside of the Premier League and we always talk about FPL on that because we've got our own mini league on the Football Ramble. So we talk about FPL on that quite a lot. And then, like Kelly said, in other shows that, that I present for uh, the Premier League, it always comes up because you know that the person you're working with has that player. But you also know that when you bring FPL into a conversation, it usually lightens the mood and it's usually done in a playful or a jokey way so you know that it's always something that you can bring up and it makes people smile um and I think that that's the real joy of FPL like we were saying before it's about that conversation and having that ability to talk to anyone about it if they play the game and it just sort of brings everyone together so yeah I'd say that that's the main things and then of course on social media you get people asking all the time what you should do with your team and and likewise I do the same because sometimes you're sat there and you're like I just cannot <laughs> decide I really don't know what to do and if I'm if I'm done texting you Sam and asking you what <laughs> I'm going to 
to do and you giving me the wrong advice I then turn to Twitter Oops. and get the wrong <laughs> advice from them um sometimes you just listen to yourself shouldn't you but you never seem to do that um so yeah Twitter is, is always good fun for FPL and I do quite like tweeting funny things when a player delivers that people have said isn't gonna or like a shock one that kind of comes out of nowhere or you know everyone likes like Kelly was saying, embracing each other's sort of fails as well as their sort of triumphs as well. So social media is quite a fun place to talk about FPL because again, it's just what we love talking about. It's just so much fun. Also, sometimes you not find it makes you feel a bit better. Like the other week when um, the Gunduan thing happened, like loads of people replied and put, oh yeah, it was really, it, that happened to me as well. But then when bad things happen, so Sam, I actually bought against my wiser judgment, I bought Harry Kane in the night before he got oh, injured. Oh no. Because, because I was peer pressured by someone else. I had the exact funds and I thought he was going to go up overnight. So I bought him in and I had to take a minus four to get him out. Anyway, we don't talk about that anymore. But like, I wanted to put that on social media because you want other people not to say, like to laugh at you, but actually you find within the FPL community that majority of people feel really sorry for you. Yeah. And you might kind of want to tell people because you're like, you kind of want to be like, show me some love, help me here, because it's so, it's so bad when those things happen. And um, like I said before, we've all been there. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I think we can all kind of help each other through, so to speak. Yeah, I think when the when there's those um, accounts that tweet out their teams and they've got like 12 points, there was a, a chap last week that tweeted out his team on the back of a wild card with 12 points because um, he'd brought in the three City players that all got benched and it was just one of those. And I thought that is why I love the FPL community because you can go, here you are, here's my rubbish game week. And everyone, rather than laughing, goes, oh my goodness, that's such bad luck because that is a really, really nice FPL team. Yeah. that's just been it's been trolled by pet roulettes and um, <laughs> other other players getting dropped or left on the bench or what have you um, or just not returning um in an unlucky way and and I think it is nice the FL community is nice for that because you can celebrate highs and also you've got somebody it's always somebody there to commiserate the low with always you. someone that's done worse than you that's always what I mean. <laughs> Did you see the person that captain Sterling and then vice captain Mane last week like that yeah. is hard luck <laughs> Oh. and that's the right thing captain vice captain in different games yeah I saw that my captain Cancelo and Gundogan when Cancelo got benched so I, I would I would always go separate games but um if I got a 12 points I'm not putting that on Twitter by the way <laughs> <laughs> and especially in my group chats like as soon as someone that you know that you've got doesn't return you just get people are straight like as your friends mostly like my friends are straight in there literally grilling me like my little sister's laughing at me she doesn't even know football when I <laughs> captain Gundogan and she captain Salah last week when he scored two against West Ham so I think and after like um Jules always said about Thomas Suchek as well I refuse to put him on my bench anymore because the last two times I put him on my bench, he got two double digit hauls. Mm -hmm. So he is staying in my team regardless because I can't take any of it anymore if I bench him. And I know people that benched him this week. Nah, I can't this bring week? myself to do it because I benched the abuse I know I'll get. <laughs> Jules and I both benched him. Um, it's so hard. And I think, you know, it's one of the, it's one of the pitfalls of, of FPL midfield this year is there's so many good options. And there's so many options that even if they're not performing, you can't bench them. So Suchek, bless his cotton socks, eating all of his potato salad, has ended up on my bench more than anybody else and has probably mostly accountable for the 200 points that have been there. <laughs> okay, so for all of us in the community, managing your life around FPL is always a bit of a challenge because as we've said already, it does kind of take over. Kelly, particularly for you, because you spend a lot of your time going off to various football matches, which must coincide with deadlines at times. So how do you manage FPL, FPL deadlines, um, and also interviewing players that potentially you've had in your FPL team that have either blanked or haven't at the end of games. I'll let you into a little secret. I actually set alarms on my phone ahead of every game week because I often am so busy. And sometimes if you get stuck in traffic or if my train's running late or if I'm busy at work doing something else, I always set an alarm. Even if my team is completely set, 
I like to have checked it. So say for a 11 o'clock deadline, I will always set a deadline for 10 to 11. Just have that 10 minutes. Like, yeah, I am sure of that. Normally to make a crazy transfer, good one, <laughs> one that's paid off, I think this season. Um, but I always like to have just looked at it before the deadline as well. So alarms really, really save me because I know, and sometimes it's quite embarrassing though when you are at work and an alarm goes off and I have to pretend, oh yeah, sorry, that was just to remind me of something <laughs> else when actually it's your FPLP. So um, yeah, I always have an alarm set. Um, I also, in the build up to weekends, um, I write I write a lot of lists, to-do lists, because otherwise often I'm around the country and I will often forget things. So whether it's like pack my bag, do my prep for BBC on Saturday, uh, then do my prep for the women's football show on Sunday. I will also put in there, sort FPL team. <laughs> Is, that has to be that is part of my weekend's prep now that is part of my weekly routine and just like I wouldn't go to work on preps I wouldn't go into a deadline uh, missing it or on prep so yeah for me it's all about preparation is key it's just as important well it's not just as important but it's important in a different way as the rest of my life now which <laughs> is unfortunately the curse of being an FPL manager I think because no one wants to miss a deadline no, it's the worst thing that can ever happen, isn't it? Missing a deadline. I was writing an article on Tuesday and I thought, oh, I'll stop just before and just double check that. I, I like you like to just double check five minutes before that. I've not roguely forgot to save my transfers or whatever um, and just missed it completely. With the problem with homeschooling at the moment, the little one appeared, that was it, bang. <laughs> the 4.30 deadline went. Like, like just double check, so just for a deadline. I'll also double check. Oh, I didn't see Dean Smith's press yesterday. Is Jack Grealish okay okay or there's not been any any developments overnight like sometimes you see rumors on twitter about about players and then so i just like to make sure i'm completely up to date going into it. and then if anything happens after the deadline it's like it's that whole like if you fail to prepare prepare to fail kind of thing it's a mantra that i kind of do with work and it's seeped now into fpl as well the rest of you, your jobs are kind of reminding everyone not to miss deadlines. Like on the FPL show, George, you must tell us about 800 times when the deadline is every week. So how do you manage your life around it? I mean, thankfully, I get that reminder <laughs> on a Thursday night every week. So I, I would never forget a deadline. Although naturally, you know, it does, it does happen sometimes. You get to a point and, you know, everyone's got other things going on that sometimes you do think oh my god it's like 15 minutes before the deadline better quickly do my team I plan to do that do I still want to do that I don't know if I want to do that but um for me the hardest thing on sat on Saturday deadlines I hate them because I quite like having the time to just sit there and think about what I want to do and then make those moves and get it all sorted the trouble with the season that we're in at the moment is that it's very hard to plan for stuff right now because mm. you don't know if games are going to be postponed and just the nature of this unpredictable season, it just makes sense to make those transfers and those changes as late as possible. But on a Saturday, I'm at BT Sport and I get to work at around about 10, 10.30. And so that's very close to the deadline. And once I'm in that building... <laughs> I don't have time to think about anything other than what I'm about to do for that show. So I always have to make sure that my team is done. Um, so I, I like doing it on a Friday night. My kind of routine with it is if it's a Saturday deadline, get in bed, sort my team out while I'm in bed just before I go to sleep. And then you do end up having those FPL dreams where you start thinking, have I done the wrong thing? <laughs> start thinking, should I have done that? And then you, you end up not getting to sleep um which is a bit sad really but um yeah so the deadlines are, are, are always really tricky to manage and especially the midweek ones they're just so annoying aren't they like, <laughs> the other day I finished work at half three and I thought perfect it's a 4 30 deadline it takes me half an hour to get home I'll get home for four and I'll have half an hour to sort my team out well me and me being me ended up standing around in the corridor talking to people so by the time I left work it was actually about four o'clock and as I got in the car and I was driving out of the car park I thought to myself oh my god I'm actually not going to have time I'm going to get home and it might be right on the cusp of the deadline so I'm not joking I pulled over on that don't worry you're not the only one <laughs> and was like right I need to just double check that I've got this right and then like I had already made I didn't make any transfers so it was just sorting out who to captain so I was then reliving our conversation of like who, I, who do I captain? Do I go Salah or do I go Bruno? And then I ended up doing Salah and obviously it was the wrong decision. So I blame me captaining Salah in this last game week on the fact that I didn't have enough time to prepare. So 
there you go. Kelly's right. Preparation is key. And uh, maybe I should take a, a leaf out of her book and start setting alarms. Hey, one thing that also really um, bothers me in terms of managing my life is the price changes. Like I spend my whole weekends looking at price changes and thinking, shall I make my transfer now? Because this player is going to go up point one, but then all these other players haven't yet played. So if I then get an injury, I'm taking a minus four. So my whole life is spent thinking about which transfer shall I make? Will I make them now or in the future? Can I afford the point one? Who else is dropping point one? Um, and like you said, George, sometimes I find we get into bed and I, the last thing Lee and I do before we go to sleep, probably shouldn't admit this, um, is look at the price changes. What's going to happen overnight um, and who therefore should we make changes on? So it, it, it is a kind of a management thing, isn't it? You do have to kind of think, right, well, these are the times that I've got. I'm going to put some time aside here to, to look at that. Uh, Liv, what about you? Yeah, like you just said there, Sam, I'm so like torn between trying to do transfers early and sort of like getting those price like before the price rise or doing them late just so you know that mm. uh, players aren't going to be injured or whatever. But like Jewel said, this talking of missing deadlines, I don't know how on earth I c it's even possible for me to miss a deadline when all me and they need to do every day is tell, <laughs> especially in so many games, is tell people when the deadline is. But this deadline, it was the 4.30 that got me because there was six o'clock games and I was just... I can't even remember what I was doing. I was just at home and I was just on my phone and, and, and my little sister was sorting out her team as well. And by the time I'd looked at my team and Son, basically I was gonna bench, my plan was to bench Son, but then I was gonna, I was bottling it. I, I wanted to put him back in and I wanted to bench someone else because I just didn't have it in me. And then mm. it got, to, I looked at my phone when Jenny was sorting her team out and I was like, oh my gosh. It, and it was 4.31. And I was like, well now Son's on my bench. And there's, <laughs> it's completely my own fault. But I much, I, I much prefer the weekend ones. I feel like I'm much more prepared, like Kelly says, for the weekend ones, whether it's a Friday night game or whether it's a Saturday morning game. I seem to get my team in, it's done, captains decided. But these midweek rounds just really, like they mess, mess it up completely. <laughs> and I have no excuse, but it still happens. I think that's just a, a pitfall of being an FPL manager. It happens to all of us at some point, doesn't it? And you feel like an absolute idiot when it happens to you. You're kind of like, how have I missed this deadline? I've been talking about this all week. Um, but yet it, somehow life occasionally gets in the way and then you berate yourself for the rest of the night. And and I imagine that sitting through the, the Tottenham game with Son on your bench will be quite painful. <laughs> Especially as a Chelsea fan as well. Like it's, it's just going to be like a double whammy if he does <laughs> Oh, praying for a blank. Praying. <laughs> Anita, what about you? Yeah, I can definitely relate to that inner turmoil when you have missed a deadline. I missed one in December. It was a Saturday game. I don't know what my excuse was. I was at work, <laughs> so I was talking about football with everyone. There was no excuse. I don't know what happened. And ten minutes later, I was just, I just kind of thought, you know, oh, let me check my team. And then I looked at the clock and then I thought again and I was thinking, no, I didn't. And I just remember <laughs> messaging the group that I'm in with Olivia and I was caps lock. I've done it, haven't I? I've gone and done it. I've missed, I missed it. And it was a week, everyone was captain in Salah. He was the obvious choice. And my, it, it stuck with Bruno Fernandes who had captain the previous game week. So I spent the whole morning praying for Bruno Fernandes <laughs> to have the best game of his life and subsequently Salah to blank. Um, Bruno had a good game. And then, yeah, the rest of the day, I was praying for Salah to blank. I'm sorry, I'm not going to lie. I'm competitive <laughs> if I don't have someone. So I was, oh God, saved by the skin of my teeth on that occasion. Um, in terms of other areas, how it affects my life, um, a couple of my friends are avid Twitter users. So they follow all these random accounts that may not have much followings, but they somehow know who footballers have got in their teams. And, you know, you, you take what they're saying for as Bible because they're on the training ground with these players who so think maybe if he's taking him out maybe I need to do the same as well um I hate thinking about things for too long so I deliberately leave my captaincy choices until like 30 minutes beforehand because otherwise I'll have a meltdown and that way I just I just try not to think about it I'll, I'll, I'll look at my team that's fine and then 30 I'll have 30 minutes where I'm just at my screen like okay 
who's likely to, you know, get a goal or an assist. And then there's no rationale. I think it's instinct. And I've noticed in the last couple of game weeks, when I don't follow my instinct, I pay big time. Yeah. Like I wanted to bring in Dinia uh, for this game week, just gone this mid game week. And my friend said, no, he wasn't looking good. He's looking a bit tired, you know, he's still trying to build up form from being out with that injury. He gets an assist. And I brought in Trent Alexander-Arnold. I wanted to oh. captain Gundogan when he brought home the goodies for everyone. Me, I wanted to do it. I was so scared. Didn't do it. Paid the price. And then I did it when everyone else did. And so listen to your instinct. <laughs> Gut feeling is definitely hugely important. It's, it's something that I think as FPL managers, we all kind of, sometimes we park because the rest of the community is doing something else. And you think, oh, the fear of everyone's captaining in somebody else means I should do that. Um, and you then don't do what you have. I mean, I've got into the habit of having a, a, a bus team, as the guys from Always Cheating call it. So I set my team, um, as soon as the deadline passes on the Saturday or whenever it is, I set my team up for the next week so that I know that if I miss the deadline or anything else bad happens, um, that my captain is at least on somebody that I think is going to have a good game week that week. Um, and yeah, I, and I guess that that helps a little bit with the managing it around the rest of our lives but it it's definitely tough no the FOMO is real like the FOMO of not having a player is so real <laughs> yeah and like just when you're talking to like even when like we're talking to like our boss me and Anita I uh, he gets in my head he'll tell me something and I'll be like oh god should I do that and it's the same with my dad and it's the same with all the players that I'm most competitive like with like when I play the game like they'll be like, oh, are you gonna you're gonna captain them? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I think you should. And I'm like, oh no, go, go away. I don't I don't want you to tell me that because it sticks in my head. And I feel like I need to make my own decisions and get them wrong myself. Because if I get them wrong when someone else has told me to do it, I'll be even more irritated by the whole thing. 